In the last lesson, we completed the HTML for our e-commerce website's index page. And here's what we ended with. So now in this lesson, we're going to add in the CSS. Let's switch into our text editor. And under the CSS folder, let's open up main.css. And let's also open up the index.html page as well. Now we're just going to work our way from the top of our HTML to the bottom. So we'll start here with the wrapper. Now the first change that I want to make to our CSS is to change the default HR styling that comes with our boilerplate. So if we scroll down here a bit, you can see that we have this default HR styling. And what I want to do is remove the top and bottom margins that are being added. So we're just going to set that to zero and we'll handle the margins for our horizontal rules ourselves. Now let's move down to the comment where it says author's custom styles. And let's start by removing the padding and margins from the main text-based HTML tags, like paragraphs and headings. So let's target the P tag, then the H1, H2, H3, H4, and H5 tags, the unordered list, oops, let's spell that right, the unordered list, and the list item tags. So we're just going to set the margins to zero and the padding to zero as well. And now to keep the font families as simple as possible, and so that you don't have to worry about going out and finding fonts, I'm just going to set the font family to Arial, Helvetica, and then just the default sans serif. Let's now style our wrapper div that we have here in our HTML page. So I'm just going to create a new comment here and we'll have this say wrapper. Now for the wrapper styles, let's switch into Photoshop real quick. And so you can see that we don't really have a body background color defined for how the site should look outside of the main design. And I kind of like this border effect and the dark background color, even though that's not intentional. But I'm just going to use a regular white background for our body, and we'll give it a border. And now for the width of the site, if you hit Command Option I, you can see that this design was set at 1300 pixels wide, but that makes me have to side scroll in the browser at my current resolution. So instead, I'm going to use a slightly smaller width of 1152 pixels wide. So let's add in this CSS for the wrapper tag. Let's switch back into our text editor and we'll target the wrapper. We'll set its width to 1,152 pixels. We'll set the top and bottom margins to zero and the left and right to auto and that'll center it in the browser. Let's also add a border on the left side so that's just going to be one pixel, it's a solid border, and we'll give it a light gray color. Now I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times, and we want a border on the right side and on the bottom. Let's save our file, and let's switch into the browser and refresh the page. There we go, we can see our margins and paddings have been removed, and we have our border, and it's being centered in the browser. Now let's work on our header. Let's switch into Photoshop. And you can see our header here. And we have these two different sections, each with different colors. So I'm going to show you once how to grab the colors that you want from your PSD file in this example. And then you'll be able to use the same technique to find all of the other colors that you want. That way you won't have to watch me fiddle around grabbing colors each time we need them. So an easy way to do this is just to click on your foreground color. That'll bring up your little color picker here. And then you can just click into the area of where you want to check the color. So if we click the top area of the header, you can see that it's a color of F6, F6, F6. And then the bottom one is just pure white, FFF, FFF. So whenever you want a color, just click into the area it auto selects it for you here and you can just hit command or control C to copy it and you can paste it right into your CSS file. So we're going to be working on the header and this top area. So we can see that this color is F6, F6, F6. I'm just going to close this out. 
Let's switch back into our text editor. And after our wrapper, let's create a new comment here for the header styles. And let's target our header tag. And I'm just going to give this a default background color of white using FFF. And then let's give the header links some default colors and text decoration just to remove the underline. So we'll target the header tag and we'll use a colon link. And then we'll target the header tag again and a colon visited so that we can style a regular link state and then the visited state of a link. I'm just going to set the color to this light blue color up here. So that's 5D AA D0. And then we'll set the text decoration to none. And that should remove the underline from our links. Now let's style this top area part specifically. So if you remember in the HTML, we have this section with an ID of top area. Let's scroll down a bit and let's just create a small comment here for the top area. And we'll target the top area ID. We'll give this a height of 50 pixels. We'll set its background color to that F6, F6, F6. We'll give it a little bit of padding. So the top and bottom will have zero padding and the left and right will have 30 pixels. And then we'll also give it a little bit of line height so that the text appears in the middle. Let's save the file. Let's go into Firefox and refresh the page. There we go. The top area is looking pretty good. Let's now work on the action bar. So we need to do this middle part here. And if you remember, our action bar has an ID here of action hyphen bar. Let's go in here and make another small comment for the action bar styling. Let's target the action bar ID. We'll give it a height of 55 pixels. We'll also give it a little bit of padding. So on the top, we'll give it 35 pixels. On the right and the bottom, we'll set those to zero. And then we want 30 pixels of padding on the left side. Then we'll also set vertical align to the middle. Now let's give our action bar links a default color. So we'll target the links inside of the action bar section. So that's the regular links and then also the visited links. And we're just going to give this a default color of black. Let's save the file and let's take a look real quick. All right, things are getting all messed up, but that'll get fixed as we continue. Let's go back in here and let's actually look at the PSD. So now let's do the logo here inside of the action bar. Let's go into our index.html page and you can see we have our div with an ID of logo and we have our logo here e-commerce. So we need to make this e that light blue color that we see in Photoshop. And we can target that using its ID of logo accent. So let's go back into our CSS file and let's put a small comment here for the action bar styling, but this is for the logo. And we'll target the action bar and then the logo accent. And we're just gonna give it that light blue color. So that's 5D. AAD0. And now we just need to style the logo itself. So let's target our action bar and the logo div. And we're going to have this float left. And we're going to give it a little bit of margin on the right side of 100 pixels. And that's just going to push the search form away from it. If you look at the design, you can see that we have this spacing here. Well, it's actually pushing the category dropdown away from it, not the search form. Let's go back into our editor and let's also change the font size. We'll put that up to 20 pixels. Let's save the file and let's take a look real quick. All right, our logo looks better. Now let's work on these dropdown menus. Let's go back into our text editor. And if we look at our HTML, you can see that we have this nav tag with a class of dropdown and then we have our unordered list. And so when we hover over the shop category link, 
it should reveal our nested list of links for the different categories. And while we style this first dropdown, since it has a class of dropdown, it's also going to style our user menu dropdown menus at the same time. So let's go back into our CSS file and let's create another small comment here. This again is for the action bar, but this is for the dropdown menu. Let's target our action bar ID and then the dropdown class. We'll have this float left. We'll give it a little bit of padding on the right side of 25 pixels and then some margin on the right side of 25 pixels. And that should push the search form away from the category dropdown menu or anything else that's on the right side of the dropdown. And let's also give this a border on the right side. It'll act as a separator. So this is going to be a one pixel border. It'll be dotted with a light gray color using AAA. Now we need to target the dropdowns unordered list. So that's action bar dropdown UL. And we're just going to set the margin and the padding to zero. And we'll also set the list style to none to remove the bullets. Now we need to target the list items inside of the unordered list. So that's action bar, drop down UL LI. And we want to have these display as block. And then we're going to position them relative and float them left. Now we need to target the nested unordered list so that it doesn't display unless we hover on it. We'll use the action bar ID, go into our dropdown, and so that's inside of UL, LI, and then the nested UL tag. And we're just going to set that to display none. Let's take a look at what we have real quick. We'll go into the browser and refresh. There we go. You can see that the dropdown is now hidden. We can only see the first link that's in the list. Let's go back into our editor and finish up the drop-down menu. Now we just need to target the links inside of the menu. So we'll use action bar dot drop down and inside of UL li and then the a tag. So we want to set this as display block and then we're going to set the text decoration to none. Let's also set its color. We want to use that light blue color, so that's 5D AAD0. And let's also give it a background color. We're just going to set that to white. And then we're going to add one pixel to the left margin. And we're going to set the white space to no wrap. And then we'll also add a little bit of padding on the left side of 10 pixels just to push the text away. So that styles the first link inside of the first list item. Now let's style our links that are inside of the nested unordered list. So that's inside of the action bar, then inside of drop down, and we need to go into the nested unordered list, then into that li tag, and then we're gonna target the links in there. So just the regular link state, and then I'll just copy this and we can paste it here and change this one to visited. And let's just set this color to black. Now let's also set the hover state for the nested links. I'm just going to copy this first one here again and we'll paste it. And let's change this to hover. And then we'll just have this change the color of the link to a light gray using AAA. Now we need to add some styling so that when we hover over the first list item, if we look in the browser, when we hover over the shop by category or the user's name, it should now display that dropdown menu. So we'll target our action bar, then into the dropdown. And whenever the first list item is hovered on, we're going to style its nested unordered list, which is our dropdown menu. So we wanna make sure to set the display to block so that it becomes visible when we hover on it. We'll set its position to absolute. We'll set the top to 100%.
and that should put it right below our link that we're hovering on. We're going to give it a border of one pixel. It'll be solid. And we'll use this light gray color of C3, C3, C3. We'll add a little bit of padding all around of five pixels. We'll set the width of the dropdown to be 160 pixels. And then we'll round the corners. So we'll use border radius and we'll set that to five pixels. And I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times. And we'll set this one for the Moz border radius for Mozilla and the WebKit border radius for WebKit browsers. And then we'll set the background color to white using FFF. And that's it for the styling of the nested unordered list. We now need to style the nested list items when they're hovered on. So we'll target the action bar, then into the dropdown. And when the first list item is hovered on, we want to style the nested li tags. So we want to set its float to none. And then we'll set the background color to white using FFF. And that should be good for our drop down menu. Let's take a look. We'll refresh the page. And you can see our links are now blue. Of course, they're on top of each other at the moment. But once we style everything, they'll move up. So if we take a look at this, and it looks like I've done something wrong as the drop down menu is not working. Let's go back into our text editor and let's see what I did wrong here. So it looks like just the hover is not working. Uh, I used a dollar sign instead of a hash symbol for the action bar ID. Let's see if that fixes it. Let's refresh again. And there we go. Looks like it's working. And you can see the hover on the links. All right, cool. Next, let's work on styling our search form here. So let's switch back into our text editor. And let's put another small comment here. This is for the product search form. And if we look in our HTML, we scroll down, we can see that we have this div here with an ID of search form. We have our form and our two inputs. And these have a search class applied to them. And then our submit button also has a submit class. So let's style this up. We'll target our action bar. And then we'll target the search form div. We'll have this float left. We'll add a little bit of padding on the right side. And we'll also add a little bit of margin on the right side as well. We'll set that to 10 pixels. And let's give this a right border. That'll just act as a separator again. So that's one pixel. We'll set it to dotted. And we'll use the light gray color of C3, C3, C3. Now let's style the search class that we applied to our input fields, the search class here this one and the one on the submit button. So we target the action bar, then our search form div, and then the class of search. Let's give these elements a border. So we'll set that to one pixel, solid, and a light gray color of EEE. -E -E. We'll give it a little bit of padding. We'll give it five pixels on the top and bottom and 10 pixels on the left and right. And let's also round the corners. So we'll use border radius and we'll set that to five pixels. Then I'll just duplicate this a couple of times to set the Moz border radius and the WebKit border radius. Now let's style the submit class that we have on our submit button. So we target the action bar and then into the search form and we target the submit class. And let's set its background color. I'm going to use the light gray color that's found here in the drop down menu for the search form, which we're not actually using, but I want to use that color. And that's F6, F6, F6. And that should be good for our search form. Let's save this and we'll go to the browser and take a look. Let's refresh. And there we go. Our search form looks good. And we can see that our 
drop down menus are working properly here. Now let's finish up the view cart link here on the right. Let's go back into our text editor and let's put a small comment here saying view cart and we'll target the action bar. And if you remember in our HTML, if we scroll down, we have this div with an ID of view cart. And that's just a link here with our blue cart image. So we can target the view cart ID and we'll have this float left. And now let's style the link inside of the view cart div. We'll target our action bar, then inside of view cart, and then target the links and its link state. And let's just copy this one. And we can paste it in, and we'll change this to visited. And we're just going to set its color to that light blue color. So that's 5D AA D0. Let's save this. Let's switch back into the browser and refresh. All right. Our action bar is complete. Now let's work on the promo section. Let's go into Photoshop and take a look at it here. Here's what it should look like. Let's go into our text editor and let's take a look at our HTML. So you can see we have this section with an ID of promo. We have our div with an ID of promo details. So we'll need to style all of this and style our promo image on the right. And we'll need to make sure that we fix up this button here as well. So it should look something like this button here. All right, let's add in the styles. Let's go back into our CSS file. Let's add in a new comment here. This is for the promo section. And let's target the promo ID. Let's give this a height of 400 pixels. We'll give this a little bit of padding. So it'll be zero on the top and bottom but 30 pixels on the left and right. Let's also give this a background color. I'm just pulling the background color from here in the PSD. This is going to be 172832. Now let's style the promo details. That's the div inside of our promo section. So we'll target the promo details div and we'll have this float left. And now let's target the image that's inside of the promo div. So that's outside of our promo details div. So we can target our promo ID and we'll target image tags. And we're going to have this float right. That way the details are on the left and then the image is on the right. Now let's target the H1 tag that's inside of our promo details, our heading here. So we can just target the main promo div and the H1 tags, and that should catch the H1 that's inside of the promo details div. And we'll give this a color of white using FFF. We'll set its font size to 34 pixels. And let's also give it a little bit of margin on the top. We'll set its top margin to 50 pixels and a little bit on the bottom. So we'll set the bottom margin to 20 pixels. And that should push our H1 heading away from the top of the promo section, and it should push this paragraph away from it as well on the bottom. Now let's style that paragraph tag. So that's inside of the promo section, and we'll target P tags, and we'll set this to have a color of 5D AA D0. That's the light blue color that's being used throughout the PSD. And we'll set its font size to 20 pixels. And we'll give it a little bit of margin on the bottom here of 50 pixels. And that's it for the promo section. Let's switch into Firefox and refresh. All right, the promo section looks good. Now we just need to finish up the button here. Let's go back into our text editor. And I'm going to put the button styles into their own little section. So let's make a new comment here. And we'll just call this buttons to hold all of the styling for any buttons that we create. And if we take a look at our button, you can see that it's just a link and it has this class of default BTN. So let's style this one. We can target the default hyphen 
btn class and we'll give this a background color. We're going to use that blue color we've been using, 5DAAD0. We'll give it a color of white using FFF, so that's the text color. We'll give it a little bit of padding, so 15 pixels on the top and bottom, and then 35 pixels on the left and right. We'll set the border radius to round the corners of the button. We'll just put that to 5 pixels. Then I'll duplicate this a couple of times. And this one will be for the Moz border radius. And then the other one for the WebKit border radius. Now I'm also going to give it a little box shadow. So we can use box hyphen shadow. And we'll set that to 0 pixels, 5 pixels, 0 pixels. And then we just need to give it a color. So for this color, all I did was select the little drop shadow that you can see down here, just using the eyedropper tool, and I grabbed that color. So I'm just going to copy it, and we can paste it in here. Now let's also set the text decoration to none, so that it's not underlined. And that's it for our default button class. That should make our button look pretty good inside of Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, and IE8 and 9. But inside of IE7, we do need to do a little fix here to fix the padding. So since we're using the HTML5 boilerplate, we can actually target IE7 specifically. If we go into our HTML file and we scroll to the top, you can see that we have these conditional comments here. And this one here checks if we're in IE7. If we are in IE7, it's going to use this HTML tag, and we'll have access to this LT-IE8 class, which we can use to add styling that we might need specifically for Internet Explorer 7 browsers. So let's do that. Let's go back into our CSS file, and we'll target that class, which is LT-IE8 and then we can target our default BTN. And to fix the padding issue, we just need to set display to inline block. And that'll clear up the issue that we were having in IE7. So let's just put a little comment here saying IE7 padding fix so that we know what that's referring to. And that's it for our button. Let's switch into Firefox and let's refresh. And it looks like it's partially working, but we don't have our margin bottom being applied here, so I must have messed something up again. Let's go back in here. And yep, you can see I have it set to 50x. That should be 50px. Let's save this and let's try it again. All right, there we go. Our button looks good. And our promo section is complete. Let's now move on to styling the main content area for our featured products. Let's go into Photoshop, and we'll close this. I'll zoom out a bit. And so we need to have our four featured products align horizontally like that. And we'll need to create this other button. So let's get to work. Let's switch into our text editor. And if we take a look at our HTML, let's scroll down here we can see that we have this section with an ID of main content. We have our featured heading, we have a horizontal rule, and then we have our products div with all four of our products in there. So let's just start with the main content section. Let's go back into our CSS file. And after our promo styles, but above our buttons, let's create another comment here. And this will be for the main content. Let's target the main content ID, and we're just going to give this a little bit of padding. So we want 20 pixels on the top, 0 on the right, 0 on the bottom, and then 30 pixels on the left. Now let's style up our H2 and H3 headings. So we can target the main content section, and we want the H2s, and main content h3 and we'll set the color for these headings to the dark blue color that's being used 
So if you just select your text tool by hitting your T key, and then you can double click the header, and you can see its color here, which is this dark blue, and we can copy that. We can go back into our text editor, and we can paste it in. And let's also add a little bit of margin to the bottom of our headings. So we'll set margin bottom to 20 pixels. And that amount will work for the H2 tags, but I want to override it for the H3 tags. So we're going to target our main content ID and then the H3s, and we're going to set the margin bottom to five pixels. Now, if you remember, our H3s are actually links, so we have the link inside of here, and we wanna make sure to style the both the link state and the visited state to give it that dark blue color and also to remove the underline from the link. So let's do that. We'll target the main content ID and then the H3 and then the link that's inside of it. And I'll just copy this and we'll paste it here and change it to visited and we'll set its color to use the dark blue color from up here. And let's also set the text decoration to none. And that's it for the H3s. Since we're styling our headers here, we might as well style the H5 for the availability. So we can target the main content H5, and we'll give this a color. This one's going to be a little different. So again, if we Go in here and let's take a look at the availability color. You can see that it's a slightly different color, it's gray. So let's copy this one and let's paste it in here. And let's also set its margin for the bottom to 20 pixels. Now let's target the paragraph tags inside of the main content section. So we use main content P and we'll just give this a little bit of margin on the bottom of 25 pixels. And now let's target our horizontal rules. So we'll use main content HR, and we'll give this some margin on the bottom of 20 pixels. And that's it for the main content div. Let's take a look at it real quick in Firefox. There we go. We have some partial styling going on. Let's now work on styling our products. So remember, we have this products div. So let's target that. Let's actually create a small comment here for the products div that we're working on. And we'll target products. And let's set text align to center. And now let's target the individual products. So remember, each product has a class of product on it. Let's go back in here and we'll target that product class. We'll set the text align to left so that the text all goes to the left instead of being centered. We'll set the display to inline hyphen block. And by doing this, it's going to display our products all horizontally on one line. But to get it working inside of IE7, we have to do a small little hack. We use an asterisk and we set display to inline, then we use another asterisk, and we set zoom to one. Now let's add a little bit of margin on the right of each product. We'll set that to 70 pixels. That should separate each product from one another. And we'll set each product's width to 200 pixels. And then we wanna make sure that these vertically align on the top. Let's take a look at that. We'll save the file. Go back into our browser and refresh. And there we go. Our products are now aligned properly. Now let's style the availability here. Let's go back into our text editor. And if you remember, the availability has this class with a span of in stock for when the product's in stock. And we also have one that's out of stock. Here, the class out of stock. So let's style those separately to give them different colors. So let's target the product class and then the in stock class. And let's just give this a green color. So you can grab that from Photoshop here. If we select our text tool, 
you can just click on the word stock and you'll get the green color here. We can copy it and let's paste it in. Now I'm just going to copy this one and we can duplicate it for the out of stock class. And instead of using green, we're just going to set this to red. So let's save that and let's take a look in the browser. We'll scroll down and there we go. We have our green in stock and our red out of stock. Now let's make sure to push our product image away from the heading here. Let's go back into our text editor. And if you remember, our product image has this class of feature. So we can target that. Let's target our product class and then the image with a class of feature. Let's put a little bit of margin on the bottom. We'll use 40 pixels and that should push it away. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now we just need to add the styling for our add to cart button. Let's go back into our text editor and down here in our button section, let's target our cart hyphen BTN class. Remember inside of each product, we have our link here with the class of cart BTN. And then we have the price inside of this span with a class of price. So let's style this up. So we're targeting the cart BTN class and let's give it a little bit of padding. So we want 10 pixels on the top, 10 on the right, 10 on the bottom, and then zero on the left. Let's also give this a background color. We're going to use that light blue that we've been using, 5DAAD0. Let's also round the corners using border radius. We'll set that to five pixels and I'll just duplicate it a couple of times and we'll set the Moz border radius and the WebKit border radius. And now similarly to our default button, this button will also have some padding problems inside of IE7. So we're going to fix that up. I'm just gonna put a comment here saying IE7 button padding fix and we'll target that LT hyphen IE8 class, and then we can target our cart BTN, and we just need to set display to inline block, and we need to set the bottom padding to five pixels. And that styling will handle most of the cart button. Now we need to style the price part of the button. As if you look at the design, we have the price is in this dark gray or light black, and then the add to cart part is in the light blue, which is what we did first. So we're gonna work on the price now. Let's go back into our CSS file, and we can target our cart BTN class and then the price class. Let's set its background color to that light gray or the light black, I should say. Let's grab that from Photoshop real quick. I can just click into it and it selects it. I'll copy it and let's paste it in. Then we'll add a bit of padding all around of 10 pixels. And now we need to round the corners, but we only want to round a couple of them. So we're going to use border top left radius. We'll set that to five pixels and that'll round the top left border. Then we're also going to round the bottom left border, setting the radius to five pixels. Then we need to target the Moz border radius. So we use Moz border radius hyphen top left, all as one word. We'll set that to five pixels. And I'm just going to duplicate this and we'll change it to be the bottom left. And now let's do the web kit. So we use webkit hyphen border top hyphen left hyphen radius. We'll set that to five pixels. We'll duplicate it and we'll change this to the bottom. And that's it for the price styling. Make sure to save your file and let's check it out in the browser real quick. And as you can see, it's a little broken at the moment but we'll fix it up. We just need to target the link styles for the link and the visited states. Let's go back into our text editor and let's target the cart BTN. 
and colon link, and then cart btn colon visited. Let's set the text decoration to none to remove the underline. We'll change its color to white using FFF, and we'll set its font size to 12 pixels so it's not so big. Let's go back into Firefox and refresh again, and there we go. Our button looks pretty good. Now to wrap up the featured products, we just need to style the wishlist link. Let's go back into our text editor. And if we take a look at our HTML, you can see that we have this paragraph with a class of wish, and we just have our link here. Let's go into our CSS file, and we actually need to scroll up and go back into where we were defining the product styles as the wish link is in a button, so we don't want to put it in the button section. So we can target our product class, and then the wish class, and we can target the links inside of it. So we'll target the, the regular link state, and then we also want to target the visited links. Let's set the color to that light blue that we've been using, 5DAAD0. Let's set the text decoration to none, and we'll change the font size to 14 pixels. Let's see how that looks. Let's refresh the page, and there we go. There's our Add to Wishlist link. So now the featured products are finished, the main content. Now we just need to work on our footer. Let's go back into our text editor, and if we look at our HTML, We'll scroll down past all of the products. Here you can see we have our footer tag, and then we have our three sections with our contact information, then the links, and finally this last section here with the copyright and connect with us and supported payments. So we're just going to start at the top and work our way down. Let's take a look at our design real quick inside of Photoshop. And if we scroll down here, here's what it should look like. Let's go back into our text editor. And I think I'm actually going to start by styling the H4 tags. So we'll just get that header out of the way. So let's go into our CSS file. And let's create a new comment here for the footer styles. And we'll target our footer tag and the H4 headings. And we're just going to set this color. If we go into Photoshop, we can grab the color here from the My Account. So we can see that it's this light gray color, so we'll just copy that. And let's paste it in here. And let's also add a little bit of margin to the bottom of 15 pixels. And that should be good for the H4 headings. So let's refresh. And you can see that our headings are now colored here properly. Let's now work on this contact section. Let's go back into our text editor, and if we look in our HTML, you can see that we have a section with an ID of contact, so we can target it that way. So after the H4 styling, I'll put a small comment here for the contact styling. And let's target our footer, and then the contact ID. We'll set its background color, and if we go into Photoshop, you can see that it's this little off-white color. It's actually a gradient, but I'm just going to use a single color. So I'm just going to grab the darkest area here, and I'll copy this, and let's paste it in. Now I'm also going to set the height of this div, or section, I should say. We'll set that to 167 pixels, and let's also make sure to align the text in the center. Let's see how that looks so far. Let's refresh. There we go. It's partially done. We need to just style the H3 heading inside of it. So let's target our footer, then the contact ID, and the H3 heading. Let's set its color. We're going to use that dark blue that we've used a few times. I'm just going to scroll up here, and we can grab it from our H3 link color. Scroll back down, and let's paste it in. Let's also add a bit of padding to the top. 
and we'll just set that to 50 pixels and that should push it down away from the top of the section. Let's take a look at that in the browser. Let's refresh. There we go. It's looking good. Now we just need to style this link. We can target our footer, then the contact ID and any links inside of it. So let's copy this for the visited state of the link. And let's set its color to that light blue. So 5D AAD0. And we'll set the text decoration to none. And let's refresh once more. All right, the contact section is now finished. Let's move on to the links. Let's switch back into Photoshop here so we can take a look at it. And so we don't have the newsletter sign up, but we want the links to look like this with the little blue right arrows. And we're going to center this in the middle of this section. So let's go back into our text editor. And if we take a look at our HTML, you can see that we have the section here with an ID of links. And then we have each of the three divs for my account, info, and extras. So let's style this up. We'll go into our style sheet and let's create a new comment here for the links that we're styling. And we'll target the footer tag and the links ID. Let's make sure to center align this and we'll add a bit of padding. So we want 20 pixels on the top and the bottom and then zero on the left and right. Now let's style the actual links, the A tags. So we'll use footer, we'll target our links ID, and then the link tags that are in there. And let's copy this so that we can style the visited state of the links. We'll change that to visited. And we'll set this to the dark blue color that we've been using, the same one that we used for the H3 heading. So we'll just paste that in here and let's remove the underline by setting the text decoration to none. Let's save this and take a look at what we have so far. We'll refresh. There we go. They're centered. Now we just need to get them to line up horizontally. Let's go back into our text editor. Let's now target the unordered lists that are inside of there. So we use footer and inside of the links section and we can target the unordered list let's add a little bit of margin on the left side of 13 pixels and we want to make sure to add the little blue right arrows as the list items so let's do that we can set list hyphen style hyphen image and put in a url here so you got to go outside of your CSS folder, because remember, we're inside of the CSS file, and we need to go into the image folder. So we use two dots to go outside of the CSS folder, then into image, and we have write hyphen arrow dot gif. And that should be good. Let's save the file. And let's take a look. All right, we have our little right arrow showing up. Let's now make sure to have these align horizontally. Let's go back into our text editor. And if we look at our HTML, you can see that our three divs have the IDs of my account, info, and extras. So we can target all three of those. So we'll use footer, my hyphen account. Then we can target footer, info, and footer, extras. We'll set the text align to left. We'll set display to inline block. Then again, to fix Internet Explorer 7, we'll have to do that little hack here by setting an asterisk and then putting display to inline, then using another asterisk and setting zoom to one. And then finally, we want to make sure that this vertically aligns at the top. There we go. Let's try that out. We'll go back into Firefox and refresh. And great, our links are now aligning horizontally. We just need to put some space between them. So let's go back into our text editor. And let's target the 
my account links and the info links. And we can just add a little bit of margin on the right to separate them. So we'll set the margin right to 130 pixels. And if we refresh the page, you can see that that now has nice spacing between them. And that looks pretty good. So that's it for the link section. Now we just need to finish up with the bottom here by doing the copyright and the connect with us and supported payments. Let's go back into our text editor and let's put another small comment here. So we're doing the copyright connect and payments section of the page. So if we take a look at our HTML and we scroll down, you can see that we have these three divs and they have those IDs of copyright, connect, and payments. We're first going to float them all to the left. So let's go into our style sheet and we can target our footer and the copyright div, then the connect div and the payments div. And we'll set float to left. If we save the file, and take a look in the browser. Let's refresh. There we go. They're now aligned properly. And you can see that it is containing our float. And that's because if you remember from the last lesson, we put this clear fix class onto our containing section element. All right, so let's look at this again. We need to add a little space between each of these so that they're separated a bit. Let's go into our text editor and back into our CSS file. And we can target our copyright div and the connect div. And let's put a little bit of margin on the right. So we'll set that to 130 pixels and that should push them apart. There we go. Now let's work on styling the copyright section first. So let's go back into our text editor and we can target the copyright div. We'll add a little bit of padding here. So we'll put 20 pixels on the top and bottom and 30 pixels on the left and right. And if you remember inside of here, we have these two paragraphs, the store description and the copyright. So let's apply some styling to those. If we take a look in Photoshop, you can see that there's slightly different colors here. So let's go back into our CSS file and let's target the footer and the copyright div and then the store description and let's set its color. So if we go into Photoshop, let's get this color here. We can just double click to select the word and we can grab its color from the color picker and let's paste it in and let's copy this one and we'll just duplicate it and we'll change this to be the store copy ID and its color is slightly different as well so let's select some text from here and we'll grab its color and let's paste it in there we go let's take a look in the browser to see how we're doing so far all right the paragraphs look good now we need to just style the logo here. Let's go into our text editor and we can target the footer and then the logo div. If you remember, the logo is inside of this div with an ID of logo and we have the link with a span with an ID of logo accent. So let's go back into our CSS file and let's set the font size to 20 pixels and let's put a little margin on the bottom here so that it pushes the paragraphs down. We'll set that to 20 pixels as well. And now we need to style the logo's link. So we can target the footer, then the logo ID and the regular link state. And I'll just copy this and we'll paste it and change it to visited and we'll set its color. And we're going to use that dark blue that we've been using a few times. So I'll just grab it from up here and let's paste it in. 
and let's make sure to remove the underline from it so we can set text decoration to none. And now if we take a look at our Photoshop document here, we can see that the logo actually looks a little different than the other logo. Up here it's a blue E, and down here it's a slightly gray color E. So let's style that. We can target the footer, then the logo ID, and we can style the logo accent. We'll set its color to the light gray color, which is 9C, 9C, 9C. And that should be it for the logo. Let's take a look at it in the browser. There we go. Looks pretty good. Now let's style up the connect with us section. Let's go back into our text editor. And if we look at the HTML, you can see we have this div with an ID of connect. So let's style the links. We'll target the footer, then the connect div, and we'll target the links inside of there. Let's copy this and paste it for the visited state. And we'll set its color to that light blue that we've been using, 5D AAD0. And again, we'll remove the text decoration. We'll set that to none. We'll save this and let's refresh the page. There we go, they're nice and pretty. Now you can see that these headers here are lined up right at the top of that horizontal rule. Instead, we want them to align with the logo here, like it is inside of the design. As you can see, they line up there. So let's do that. We can target our footer and the connect div, and that's the H4 tag. And we also want to target the H4 that's in the Payments div. And we can just set a little bit of margin on the top. We'll put that to 25 pixels. And that should push them away for us. There we go. They now line up. Now let's style this unordered list here. We need to make sure that it pushes in a bit. And we want it to use the Twitter and Facebook icons. So let's go back into our text editor. And let's target the connect unordered list. And we'll set the margin left to 30 pixels so that it indents it a little bit. And then if we look at our HTML, you can see that the list here and the list item tags have the class of Twitter and the class of FB for Facebook. So we can use that to apply the icons to those, the little bullets. So let's do the Twitter one first. We can target the footer, the connect div, ul, li, and the Twitter class. And we can set list style image. And that's going to go into the image folder and use our twitter.gif. Then we can just copy this and duplicate it. And we'll change this to use the fb class and we'll have it use our FB image for Facebook. And with that, we are finished with our CSS. Make sure to save your files. Let's go back into Firefox one last time and refresh. Let's scroll down. And there's our nice little icons. And so here's our complete design. I think it looks pretty good. So now remember, all of our other PSDs will use this same basic design as they'll share the header with the top area, the action bar, and the footer. So that'll save us some time while doing the next conversion. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next lesson.